Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about ADHD. Now, I've been doing a series on mental illness, mental disorders. ADHD is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. This is me kind of wanting to make sure I do things in case I stop doing podcasts. Like, what would I regret? I wanted to do a series on most of the mental illnesses slash disorders. This way, you know, I can look back on it and say, oh, you know, I, I did these certain things I needed to do. And just to give you an idea, I've been running this muted for five minutes. I really should have done all these when I felt I could. <laughs> you know, the magic of editing. Just when you're in the right frame of mind, right mood, you could just you know, do five to ten podcasts, record them, and then do little intros and stuff, but I spent five minutes muted trying to prepare myself for these, so. Okay, um, uh, I'll do the links in the description. I usually read it word for word. There are highlighted words and um, underlined, which lead to links, which can lead you into deeper dives, into some of the topics I'll be discussing in the article maybe i'll go to another article but like i said um i really should have uh done a lot of these when i was in the right frame of mind but here we are maybe i have adhd who knows you know depression is on there all right so this one will not have a, a credit for the writer because it's like an article i check anyway Again, um, doing a series on mental illnesses, disorders. I want to do enough of these where I feel if I step away from the channel, stop doing podcasts, like I was thinking, what would I regret not doing? And I've done so many on mental health and sciences, but I figured I'd rather hit these topics, you know, one by one and get a, um, you know, a good uh, variety of them in there before I decide. I might just come back, like, I don't know. Um, brain's not functioning properly all right so this will be from the national institute of mental health again i didn't see a credit for someone who wrote it i've been checking because i like to give credit um all right so let's begin overview attention deficit hyperactivity disorder adhd is marked by an ongoing pattern of inattention and or hyperactivity impulsivity that interferes with functioning or development. People with ADHD experience an ongoing pattern of the following types of symptoms. Inattention. Means a person may have difficulty staying on task, sustaining focus, and staying organized. And these problems are not due to defiance or lack of comprehension. Hyperactivity. Means a person may seem to move about constantly, including in situations when it's not appropriate, or excessive, excessively fidgets, taps, or talks. In adults, hyperactivity may mean extreme restlessness or talking too much. Impulsivity means a person may act without thinking or have difficulty with self-control. Impulsivity could also include a desire for immediate rewards or the inability to delay gratification. An impulsive person may interrupt others or make important decisions without considering long-term consequences. Mm -hmm. Signs and symptoms. Some people with ADHD mainly have symptoms of inattention. Others mostly have symptoms of hyperactivity and impulsivity. Some people have both types of symptoms. Many people experience some inattention, unfocused motor activity, and impulsivity. But for people with ADHD, these behaviors are more severe, occur, occur more often, interfere with or reduce the quality of of how they function socially, at school, or in a job. Inattention. People with symptoms of inattention may often overlook or miss details and make seemingly careless mistakes in schoolwork, at work, or during other activities. Have difficulty sustaining attention during play or tasks, such as conversations, lectures, or lengthy reading. Not to seem to listen when spoken to directly. <laughs> Uh, find it hard 
to follow through on instructions or finish schoolwork, chores, or duties in the workplace, or may start tasks but lose focus and get easily sidetracked. Have difficulty organizing tasks and activities, doing tasks in sequence, keeping materials and belonging in order, managing time, and meeting deadlines. Avoid tasks that require sustained mental effort, such as homework, or for teens and older adults preparing reports, completing forms, or reviewing lengthy papers. Lose things necessary for tasks or activities, such as school supplies, pencils, books, tools, wallets, keys, paperwork, eyeglasses, cell phones. Be easily distracted by unrelated thoughts or stimuli. Be forgetful in daily activities, such as chores, errands, returning calls, and keeping appointments. Now, again, with a lot of these things I'm talking about, there's a lot of overlap in things. But you meet people, you know people, you love people who just have symptoms, like have several of these disorders, and you would think that they've gone and gotten diagnosed for like three of them. And it, it is astounding. It's fascinating to me. A little sad, you know, with the right support structure, a lot of these talk about you can leave healthy, quality lives, but it's, it's daunting sometimes. Next is hyperactivity impulsivity. People with symptoms of hyperactivity impulsivity may often fidget and squirm while seated, leave their seats in situations when staying seated is expected, such as in the classroom or the office, run, dash around, or climb at inappropriate times, or in teens and adults, often feel restless. Be unable to play or engage in hobbies quietly. Be constantly in motion or on the go. Or act as if driven by a motor. Talk excessively. Answer questions before they are fully asked. Finish other per- people's sentences or speak without waiting for a turn in a conversation. Have difficulty waiting one's turn. Interrupt or intrude on others for examples in conversations, games, or activities. Primary care providers sometimes diagnose and treat ADHD. They may also refer individuals to a mental health professional, such as a psychiatrist or clinical psychologist, who can do a thorough evaluation and make ADHD diagnosis. For a person to receive a diagnosis of ADHD, the symptoms of inattention and or hyperactivity impulsivity must be chronic or long-lasting, impair the person's functioning, and cause a person to fall behind typical development for their age. Stress, sleep disorders, anxiety, depression, and other physical conditions or illnesses can cause similar symptoms to those of ADHD. <laughs> I just mentioned this a couple of seconds ago. I, obviously, I read them. I just don't. I prepare them in a sense, but like I said, this day and age, I just want to be done with a lot of the stuff. Um... Therefore, a thorough evaluation is necessary to determine the cause of the symptoms. Most children with ADHD receive a diagnosis during the elementary school years. For an adolescent or adult to receive a diagnosis of ADHD, the symptoms need to have been present before age 12. Hmm. ADHD symptoms can appear as early as between the ages of 3 and 6 and can continue through adolescence and adulthood. Symptoms of ADHD can be mistaken for emotional or disciplinary problems or missed entirely in children who primarily have the symptoms of inattention, leading to a delay in diagnosis. Adults with undiagnosed ADHD may have a history of poor academic performance, problems at work, or difficult or failed relationships. ADHD symptoms can change over time as a person ages. In young children with ADHD, hyperactivity and pulsivity is the most predominant symptom. As a child reaches elementary school, the symptoms of inattention may become more prominent and cause the child to struggle academically. In adolescence, hyperactivity seems to lessen and symptoms may, be, may more likely include feelings of restlessness or fidgeting. But inattention and pulsivity may remain. Many adolescents with ADHD also struggle with relationships and antisocial behavior. Inattention, restlessness, and impulsivity tend to persist into adulthood. Risk factors. Researchers are not sure what causes ADHD, although many studies suggest that genes play a large role. Like many other disorders, 
ADHD probably really results from a combination of factors. In addition to genetics, researchers are looking at possible environmental factors that might raise the risk of developing ADHD and are studying how brain injuries, nutrition, and social environments might play a role in ADHD. ADHD is more common in males than females, and females with ADHD are more likely to primarily have inattention symptoms. People with ADHD often have other conditions such as learning disabilities, anxiety disorder, conduct behavior, depression, and substance abuse disorder. <laughs> oh, shit. <clears throat> I'll continue. Treatment and therapies. While there is no cure for ADHD, currently available treatments may reduce symptoms and improve functioning. Treatments include medication, psychotherapy, education or training, or a combination of treatments. Medication. For many people with ADHD, medications reduce hyperactivity and impulsivity and improve their ability to focus, work, and learn. Sometimes several different medications or dosages must be tried before finding the right one that works for a particular person. Anyone taking medications must be monitored closely by their prescribing doctor. Now, first off, first off, whatever the fuck I'm on. And this is like a very important thing is to know to go back and change the dosage and whatever potions they're making, make sure it fits you and you feel right and be honest. If you're not feeling like a whole person and you're your full self, and you got to talk to your doctor, your primary care, psychologist, whatever, and explain to them how the medicine's making you feel. You don't want to feel this way, so on and so forth. So, so many people go off their meds and just have, just ride their manic episodes uh, until they burn out. Stimulants. The most common type of medication used for treating ADHD is also called a stimulant. Although it may seem unusual to treat ADHD with a medication that is considered a stimulant, it works by increasing the brain chemicals dopamine and norepinephrine. What? Nor norepinephrine, norepinephrine, <laughs> which play essential roles in thinking and attention. Under medical supervision, stimulant medications are considered safe. However, like all medications, they can have side effects, especially when misused or taken in excess. Of the prescribed dose and require an individual's health care provider to monitor how they may be reacting to the medication. Non stimulants. A few other ADHD medications are non stimulants. These medications take longer to start working than stimulants, but can also improve focus, attention, and impulsivity in a person with ADHD. Doctors may prescribe a non stimulant when a person has bothersome side effects from stimulants. When a stimulant was not effective, or a combination with a stimulant to increase effectiveness. Although not approved by the U.S. Drug Food Administration, specifically for the treatment of ADHD, some antidepressants are used alone or in combination with a stimulant to treat ADHD. Antidepressants may help all the symptoms of ADHD and can be prescribed if a patient has become, oh, if a patient has bothersome side effects from stimulants. Antidepressants can be helpful in combination with stimulants if a patient also has another condition, such as an anxiety disorder, depression, or another mood disorder. Non-stimulant ADHD medications and antidepressants may also have side effects. Doctors and patients can work together to find the best medication, dose, or medication combination. Learn the basics about stimulants and other mental health medications in the NIMH Mental Health medications webpage and there's a link highlighted in blue and check the fda website for the latest medication approvals warnings and patient information guides again i'll stress this a lot of these words and things are highlighted blue or underlined they have links to other you know studies and resources and information about the topics covered because to technically this would be like a 50 hour long podcast going over all the nuances of every single disorder and illness, psychotherapy, and psychosocial interventions. Several specific psychosocial interventions have been shown to help individuals with ADHD and their families manage symptoms and improve everyday functioning. For school-aged children, frustration, blame, and anger 
may have built up within a family before a child is diagnosed. Parents and children may need specialized help to overcome negative feelings. Mental health professionals can educate parents about ADHD and how it affects a family. They also will help the child with his or her parents develop new skills, attitudes, and ways of relating to each other. All types of therapy for children and teens with ADHD require parents to play an active role. Psychotherapy that includes only individual treatment sessions with the child without parent involvement is not effective for managing ADHD symptoms and behavior. This type of treatment is more likely to be effective for treating symptoms of anxiety or depression that may occur along with ADHD. Now, I have a friend, so blah, 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 we all have lots of friends, but anyway... I, I try to circumvent some of the logic he has with concerning his children. I, mean, I don't have kids. But there is something to say about the certain attitude and behaviors you're bringing to guiding your children through certain ages of life. And uh, I, I talked about the developmental stages of the brain. Well, it's not a, a set rule, but you can govern uh, a child's mental, their brain capacity in the you know, developmental stages in a general sense let's just say ages one to four, you know, five to eight, five to seven, and you can kind of get an idea of what a child is capable of and where they kind of stand. Now, they're always outliers. But in some of the things I try to circumvent was his uh, their attention to how they were trying to do things with the kids, and then you start getting into, you know, but I have to spank my kid, but, you know, and that's where you start getting, you know, into a little uh, gray area, and I me mean, not being a parent, I just have to be my irreverent asshole self. But it's just in- interesting when some of these things, because you have to do these things with your kids with them. It just has to be done like that. Anyway, my brain, I have my own issues, so let's just continue. Behavioral therapy is a type of psychotherapy that aims to help a person change their behavior. It might involve practice assistance such as help organizing tasks or completing schoolwork, or working through emotionally difficult events. Behavioral therapy also teaches a person how to monitor their own behavior, give oneself praise or rewards for acting in a desired way, such as controlling anger or thinking before acting. This is a big part of my mental health meditation thing where I breathe in through the nose three to five seconds slowly, let it out five to eight seconds or longer, and that's your focus, that's your, um, you know, your balancing, that's your cleansing. And when you practice this enough, and I mean, do it before you answer the phone, when you wake up in the morning, before you greet your pet, before you greet your children, before you brush your teeth, before you head out the door, before you get in your car, before, I mean, you just do this all the time, all, and you don't have to, like, close your eyes and be like a zen, you just do it when you're on the train, when you're holding on to the straps, you can do it all the time. And what happens is you train your body and uh, to do it on instinct without you even thinking about it. Anyway, it's important to me, I think. All right, so monitor. Okay, parents, teachers, and family members also can give feedback on certain behaviors and help establish clear rules, chore lists, and structured routines to help a person control their behavior. Therapists may also teach children social skills such as how to wait their turn, share toys, ask for help, or respond to teasing. Learning to read facial expressions and the tone of voice in others and how to respond appropriately can be part of a social skills training. And you see that? Learning to read facial expressions and the tone of the voice. I did a long, well, this was years ago, on um, human behavior, you know, evolutionary fucking whatever, whatever, and how mental... Uh, mentalist and magicians fool you. They understand these things. Where your eyes gonna go? What you're gonna focus on? It's it's again for me fascinating. Um, cognitive behavioral therapy. Well, this is the one that I get touted for. It's just silly, but helps a person learn how to be aware and accepting of one's thoughts and feelings to improve focus and concentration. The therapist also encourages the person with ADHD to adjust to the life changes that come with treatment, such as thinking before acting or resisting the urge to take unnecessary risks. Again, this is my whole thing. If you go through, well, it's probably horrible. I think I talked about this 
but I did a, a couple of podcasts on this where I described what to do. You know, you basically want to breathe out with the way I described, and that makes you neutral. And then you want to train yourself with positive thoughts and negative thoughts. And it doesn't mean just being negative, but well, well you lost a loved one, right? Well, learn how to turn that grief into happiness and a smile to, to understand that the time you've had is worth more than the grieving process, which is necessary, but it's not something you want to live with for years and years. So how do you do that? Well, you, you know, I create a construct and I, I speak to the people and I make sure every interaction in my construct is ended with a balance and, and then a positive reaction. So now when I think of my fiance, it's always in, for the most part, look, we're, we're all human, but it's mostly in beauty and you know, just lucky I spent 17 years with a woman, and even if it was 13 years of struggle, it's, it's all worth it. And to take that turmoil and struggle and, I don't know, trauma for 13 years and, you know, try to turn it into light and, you know, joy, it's hard. It's, a, it's work, too. <sighs> anyway, family and martial therapy can help family members and spouses find productive ways to handle disruptive behaviors, encourage behavior changes, and improve interactions with the person with ADHD. Parenting skills training... What? Parenting skills training, behavioral parent management to your training... I don't know, my fucking brain. Teaches parent skills for encouraging and rewarding positive behaviors in their children. Parents are taught to use a system of rewards and consequences to change a child's behavior to give immediate and positive feedback for behaviors they want to encourage, and to ignore or redirect behaviors they want to discourage. Yeah, well, you know what one of those things isn't? It's fucking hitting your kids, okay? <laughs> we know the, what it does to the brain now, so I, I'd, I'd avoid it. And what do I know? I'm just a fucking idiot. Specific behavioral classroom management interventions and or academic accommodations. For children and teens has been shown to be effective for managing symptoms and improving functioning at school and with peers. Interventions may include behavior management plans or teaching organizational or study skills. Accommodations may include preferential seating in the classroom, reduced classwork load, or extended time on tests and exams. The school may provide accommodation through what is called a 504 plan or for children who qualify for special education services, an individualized education plan. EP. To learn more about Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, IDEA, visit the U.S. Department and there's a link. Again, highlighted blue links, anything you don't understand, you want to go into deeper, it's all there. You hit the links and, you know. Stress management techniques can benefit parents of children with ADHD by increasing their ability to deal with frustration so that they can respond calmly to their child's behavior. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Sometimes I look back on, you know, trying to be helpful and um, all these things are just, they keep bringing up, you know, certain people and certain conversations I had, you know. Anyway, uh, stress uh, support groups can help parents and families connect with others who have similar problems and concerns. Groups often meet regularly to share frustrations and successes to exchange information about recommended specialists and strategies, and to do talk with experts. The National Resource Center on ADHD, a program of children and adults with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, holy shit, called CHAD. See, get the fuck out of here. Fuck out of here. The National Resource Center on ADHD, a program of children and adults with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, CHAD. <laughs> All right. Supported by the Center of Disease Control Prevention Center has information and many resources. You can reach the center online or by phone at 1-866-200-8098. For more information on psychotherapy, see the psychotherapy's webpage, and that's a link also. Tips to help kids and adults with ADHD stay organized. For kids. Parent and teachers can help kids with ADHD stay organized and follow directions with tools such as keeping a routine and schedule, keep the same routine every day from wake-up time to bedtime, 
including times for homework, outdoor play, and indoor activities. Keep the schedule on the refrigerator or bulletin board. Write changes on the schedule far in advance as possible. Organizing everyday items. Have a place for everything, such as clothing, backpacks, and toys. And keep everything in its place. <laughs> this is, you know, because it's really telling parents to, you know, do, your sh- do all the work. Like, you got to do this every day for your kid and with your kid, right? So, <laughs> using homework and notebook organizers. Using organizers for school material and supplies. Stress to your child the importance of writing down assignments and bringing them home nece- bringing home necessary books B- being clear and consistent children with ADHD need consistent rules they can understand and follow giving praise or rewards when its rules are followed children with ADHD often receive and expect criticism look for good behavior and praise it oh there's another someone wrote this in with crayon beat your kids <laughs> Spank them. Yeah, it's what they need. For adults, a professional counselor or a therapist can help an adult with ADHD learn how to organize their life with tools such as keeping routines, making lists for different tasks and activities, using a calendar for scheduling events, using reminder notes, assigning a specific place for keys, bills, and paperwork, Breaking down large tasks into more manageable, smaller steps, so that the completing each part of the task provides a sense of accomplishment. Oh, and your magic marker is written over and <laughs> just spank each other. <laughs> to beat the adults. Why not just hit the adults to teach them, right? <laughs> oh, fuck God. <clears throat> Join a study. Clinical trials are, re- are research studies that look into new ways. I do this in like every podcast. Like I've done so many of these and sometimes I've done more than one in a row, you know, like in pre- preparation. So this is like the, at the end of every fucking thing. Join a study. Uh, look at ways to prevent, detect, or treat disease and condition. The goal of clinical trials is to determine if a new test or treatment works and is safe. Although individuals may benefit from being part of a clinical trial, participants should be aware that the primary purpose of a clinical trial is to gain new scientific knowledge so that others may be better helped in the future. Researchers at NIMH and around the country conduct many studies with patients and healthy volunteers. We have new and better treatment options today because of what clinical trials uncovered years ago. Be part of tomorrow's medical breakthroughs. Talk to your healthcare provider about clinical trials. Their benefits, their risks, and whether one is right for you. Yeah. To learn more, find the study, visit, and there's links and the clinical trials webpage. Learn more. Free brochures, cerebral uh, resources. Again, I do this at probably every podcast because this website that I chose to mainly highlight these disorders and illnesses had these type of things. So you don't have to hear me flubber through um, these fucking words to document my slowly losing my mind and sanity. It's just too much shit I got to deal with. Um, you can just hit these links. Go do your own research. Just being informed is a great, wonderful thing. I totally advise that for everybody. I am not the end-all, be-all. I'm not the wizard or the most smartest person. But going to the resources every once in a while, and I'm not saying get a degree, but your parents, you had, and this is obviously one of these things that's more centered for children. But it, it happens and it grows and you become an adult. So you have to learn how to deal with these things. And it's hard. It's difficult. Children, you know, we just resort to hitting and spanking them or you know, whatever. And I get it. I'm not a parent. You're a parent. But, you know, we know what science is telling us. We know what the brain does. We know what trauma does in a kid. We know how it even look, what it looks like and what it affects as they get older. It's just fucking annoying to me. But, you know. What are you going to do? There's no rule books for all this stuff. It is multimedia. You can get a um, mental health care minute. A lot of these things will even lead to quick um, videos to watch, which is awesome. So you don't have to get bogged down in you know, reading things like I do or did or have or am. 
and what I'll be doing for the next couple ones. Again, like, I don't know. I'm going to tell you how stupid I am. Right? So this is a fucking little thing. The other day in New York City, it was like the apocalypse. It was orange, red, fog, haze, smoke from Canada's fire. It was fucking nuts. And I finished my first shift at work. I came home. And normally what I do is on certain uh, three days of the week, I go out, get my jump rope, I go in the backyard. And believe it or not, I say it's, you know, for weight loss and to build up my cardiovascular system, which it is. But secretly, here's a little secret. The whooshing of the rope focuses me. When I'm going, and it snaps and hits the floor and I'm jumping rope, even if I can only go three minutes at a time, because I can't build up to 20 minutes yet, I used to be able to do it really good. It's the sound of rope makes cutting through the wind and hitting the ground and that one tap and whoosh. And I can't tell you how it just frees my mind. It keeps, it just, sometimes it just holds me together. And a lot of times with people with these mental illnesses and stuff, it's almost um, like telling somebody, or someone you love, it's a lyric like out of music. Uh, Where would I be without your love holding me together? Like, and what are the tools we're using and depending on to keep us sane and and functioning. Well, you know, we rely on our friends and our family. When they're not there, what do we do? We resort to other things, maybe drug abuse and whatever, manic behaviors, whatever, depending on illnesses. And for me, I resort to my tools of, you know, focusing and breathing and meditating. And when I hit that jump rope and I hear that whooshing, it's just, it's just such relief. Anyway, Oh, anyway, I'm in the fucking apocalypse fog. I go to go out to do uh, my jump rope and go, what the fuck is going on? This is insane. I call the lady next door who works there at the store next door. My, next door, my landlord has a vitamin shop. It's not like a store store. And it's a, you know, it's a store store in that sense. But she's on the phone in the foyer because she locked herself out because she was fascinated about the color of the fucking smoke. And so she's locked out of her apartment. I mean, uh, out of the store. So we're talking outside, and a minute later, her daughter, her mother drops off her daughter, who's like four or five years old, and I helped him into the window. I opened the window, and we throw the kid through the window, not throw, gently picked her up and put her through the window, and she buzzed her in, and she was able to get right back into work like a minute after being locked out or whatever the fuck it was. However... At that time, my brain did not process anything. I was distracted. I wanted to help them, and I didn't think about what was coming next. So what did I do? As soon as I scooted her through the window and I saw they were okay, I started jumping rope. Yeah. So there I am jumping rope. I don't know how much time is going by, but I'm, I'm keeled over um, on one knee, gasping, breathing, coughing, throat burning, head pounding, and one of the people who lives here drives into the backyard with his car, and he goes, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I go, I wanted to jump rope, and it didn't hit me. Why the fuck would I jump rope in here? Did I not even care about air quality? Like, nothing. No, you know why? Because I know for me, I was desperate. It was just desperation. I had to, I had to get out there and jump rope. I didn't know what else to do. I... I try all the different things and videos and my breathing and I even started playing guitar again, which was a fucking disaster technically. But um I needed to do it and I didn't fucking think of anything. No regard for air quality, what it would do for my lungs. Nothing. I just went right to the backyard and started fucking jump roping. And again I'm coughing, hacking up, like dry heaving. Head is pounding, veins. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Because, you know, I'm a little heavy and I'm trying to get back into the jump roping and I can't sustain a 20 minute sweat yet, you know, and and keep that moment. So I, I'm, I'm used to, like, you know, starting and stopping out of breath, you know, you got to build it build it up. And it, my focus and where I was in my headspace, where I've been a lot lately, I just reach for the. The medicine, for me, that's my medicine. That's the, it's a cure-all. Gotta hear the rope, 
whooshing by, the sound it makes as it cuts through the air, the little tap on the floor as they jump over it, and man, it just clears my mind, it helps everything fade away, and I guess I'm ending this podcast in that sense, but I'll do a quick, I did have a couple of articles, things opened up, and I'll go over that quickly, because I'm just fucking losing it half the time, um, there was like something interesting, like, There were different cool takes, like, what I read from that NIMH is mostly like a medical type advice thing, and sometimes there were articles I like to read where persons or people's uh, personal experience or their view on things, because that's what articles are, like, what the fuck was that? I wonder if that was, I don't think that went over, but it just blared in my headphones. A lot of these things have websites that have um videos and this one just started a video and a lot of these videos are almost kid parent friendly or i should say stupid friendly dumb friendly you know we're not all scientists we're not all capable of being fucking doctors we just need some tools to help us get through life and some of these videos are great i love youtube i love i did a 50 something part fucking psychology course it was fucking awesome and these are the things that are great. I hope that if it went over on the thing, I don't give a fuck anymore. I swear I'm so almost done with this and not in a bad way. Like, oh, I hate it. I don't have fucking 60 people subscribing. I don't care. I never cared about status and money doesn't mean much to me in that way anymore. Well, to be honest, it would be to, you know, take care of my aunt and whatever. But yeah, I'm just not a uh, money and status. Uh, give a fuck anymore but i like doing it It was discipline for me and this is why this is a struggle now i'm in such such a bad place and stuff that i don't want to take any of my energy away from keeping myself healthy mentally and physically and if this is not the a tool to help me i i got I, I gotta cut it out or something and what like i said this is another article it was from like webmd but you know, and they do the symptoms and everything, but there was another one, uh, you know, and I don't really got the time and uh, focus, so I'll just say there's lots of stuff out there, please l- look into this, because this is something that kids are going to experience, and adults might not find it, and again, it talks about these the attitudes and behaviors parents will go and start developing because of their kid. Are they being, you know, disrespectful, and they're not listening, or maybe they don't have the capacity Maybe there's synapse, things are misfiring, and there's a chemical problem, and there's a genetic problem. And, you know, so this is a way of becoming informed as a human for other people, and also for your family, for your kids. This is something I think is so important to advise. Become informed. Have an informed opinion. You don't have to have a fucking doctoral degree, you know, whatever. I, I praise you for it if you do. But, you know, that social worker, you know, bullshit thing you get, it's such nonsense in a way. But in some ways, at least they're informed. At least they have a, you know, some experience and they dip their toe into it to some extent. When you learn how to help kids in school and be if you're a social worker, it's just that much more knowledge. You know, I don't know nothing about fixing a car. Very, very, very little, only because I've been driving for fucking 40 years or whatever, almost 40 years. But, and I had to keep them running. Like, so what does that mean? It means, no, I, I, I understand someone else's expert opinion on the, the matter, so I get an informed opinion from them. I learn about keeping your oil monitor, your filters going, getting your checkup, changing your oil, right? This is what you do. And if you just don't pay attention to that, it doesn't matter how good sometimes your car is, things will happen. So, for me, it's knowing how to keep a car running and let the mechanics do their job. And yes, I know, but it was, it, you always get to find the right doctor, you got to find the right mechanic. I get it. Again, I'm really getting um, misled. I'm doing, I got my own fucking shit. Um, but again, I'm just going to put the link for the NIMH, the one I read. But I implore everybody out there to just become informed. If it's one of these things, if it's schizophrenia, if it's... You know, depression, it doesn't mean you have to spend hours. You could take, you know, a 7 to 11 minute read, maybe even quicker for some people. And if you're mad at me, you got some fucking problems, whatever, I get it. You know, all you have to do is look at the topic of the fucking 
video. Oh, what's he talking about? Um, he's talking about ADHD, and then go and do your own little deep dive. It could just be a reminder, uh, uh, an alarm that goes off, or just a, you know, a thing on the on the refrigerator. Hey, bipolar disorder. Take seven to eleven minutes. Become a problem. And if it's something that triggers something in you, like a memory, oh my friend, reach out. Again, be loving and understanding. I tend to view, I tend to view it as an unconditional love. You love somebody for all their faults, all their, you know, good things, and you understand. It doesn't mean you get walked over or get treated like shit, although you tend to do that when you're trying to help people. So if you're that temperament, that's just coming with the, you know, don't don't get, you're not going to get thanked. You could be too busy breaking your own arm to pat yourself on the back trying to help people. And we're all human. We all have egos and all that shit, and it's hard. We can get into a discussion about dissolving the ego and all this fucking nonsense. But my goal here is, while I still have the sanity and I still have the fucking know-it-all, wear-it-all to fucking even turn on my shit and do everything, because sometimes it's that downward spiral and, you know, you're struggling to just maintain yourself. I want to get out some mental illness disorders in a nice chunk, which is why I haven't even done anything else. Get them out there. And have it be a part of my playlist because I have lots of playlists. Um, and you can just hit things you want. If you want to hear me talk irreverent and bullshit about TVs and movies, there's a playlist for that. You know, my sciences, the where the aliens, you know, just little things that people can focus on. And mental health, my wellness for foundations is important, was what started this in a way. So I hope everybody, at least, it said, becomes informed. No one has to go out and get a doctorate. It's just understanding these topics to an extent. Or maybe recognizing it. Maybe being helpful. You know, you might be able to prevent something from happening. You might be able to become a better friend. And that's the goal, I hope. So, again, I don't know if I'm doing a lot of these once. If I even have, the, you know, the mental capacity to start. Again, you know, do get this, do whatever, do another one. I don't know. But there will be more, no matter what. Even if I got to come on here and smoke vapes and have fucking... Cause I'm really, I'm going to do um, mushrooms, uh, microdose, psilocybin again. It was what really fucking helped me the first time. And it helped me for like, like two years. But, so I might have to get my hand on that. Anyway, that's it for now. I think of everybody always, especially the people I love. It doesn't mean I'm mad or angry. Uh, I would love to hug you and support you, everybody. My best to you and yours. Take care.